All right, welcome back to Way of the Ranch and another episode of How to Become a Welder. On today's very special episode, we are gonna talk about butt welds, the gap required between the materials, and something called a keyhole. So, let's get welding. So first up, what is a butt welding joint? Well, a butt weld is simply when you take two pieces of material and you butt them up against each other. Now, you can have a closed version where there is no gap between them, or you can have an open version where you have a slight gap between them. Why would you want to have a gap? What's the difference? Well, for that, we need another chalk drawing. All right, so with a closed butt welding joint, you can see these two pieces are butted right up against each other, so there's no gap. And when we go to do our weld on here, we are going to get a certain amount of penetration based off of how thick this is. Now, if it's thin sheet metal, we're going to have no problem getting a full thickness weld, but if it's something like quarter inch or even eighth of an inch material, we're not going to get a full weld through there, so we're going to have a weak joint. Now with an open butt welding joint, you can see there's a gap between the two pieces and that's going to let me take the gas welding torch and heat and melt the metal all the way at the bottom of the material and fill it up with my filler rod as I go. Now, not only am I going to get a full thickness weld, the weld bead will actually kind of sag and if I do it properly, I'll have a second weld bead underneath. So this will be really nice and strong for us. Now, a really cool thing about using this technique is that if you don't have access to weld the other side, such as you're welding a pipe up, then um, this technique will allow you to do that and have a full thickness weld. All right, so another cool reason why you might want to use open butt welding joint is to reduce distortions in your base material. So remember that when we are welding, we're laying a ton of heat into this material and as that weld bead cools down, it actually shrinks. So if we have a closed butt welding joint, that material is going to try to come together even closer, but it can't go any closer because it's already touching. So what it starts to do is kind of warp up your base material. And this happens a lot with thinner stuff like thin sheet metal. All right, so with having all these benefits to having an open butt welded joint, the next logical question would be how much of a gap do I leave between my pieces? Now, there is no hard fast rule because there's a whole bunch of factors that would affect this, including the size of your welding tip, the rate of travel that you feel comfortable gas welding at, and even the skill of the operator can kind of make a big difference. So I can leave you with a guideline though. Any kind of thin stuff all the way up to about one eighth of an inch, I would say that you should leave a gap about the thickness of the material. And then anything thicker than eighth of an inch, you're gonna to have to do some kind of edge prep. You're gonna to have to grind one or both edges with a bevel or a chamfer so that you can get um, the material to go all the way through. Now, another thing you could do is cut a whole bunch of samples and try welding different samples with different kind of gaps and see how that affects your weld penetration. And what you're gonna find is that when you do the closed butt weld joint, you're gonna have a weld bead on top and flip it over and there will be absolutely no weld penetration. And then try another one with maybe a sixteenth of an inch of a gap. You're going to have one good weld bead on the top. When you flip it over, you're going to see that maybe you got halfway through or three quarters of the way through. So still not full thickness. And when you get to the right gap that you need, you're going to find that there's a nice weld on top and then another kind of hanging weld underneath. And that's what you're looking for. So this is one eighth of an inch. So I'm going to try a one eighth of an inch gap. So even though that you've got the proper size gap in your material, you're going to find another problem happens really quickly. Now, when you're going to melt your filler rod, you're going to find that it kind of goes bloop and covers the top of your sample before you actually get enough heat to get to the bottom of the material and fill it up with filler rod. Now, the only way to fix this is through something called a keyhole. And in order for me to show you that, we need to do another caveman drawing on the ground. So here's our weld sample. You can see the two pieces and the gap that is between the two. Now, now, when we're talking about a keyhole, what we're referring to is a circle or a hole here that we have used the heat of the torch to burn a hole through here that is wider than the gap that is there. And it resembles a keyhole that like an old skeleton key would go into. Now, as long as you've got that keyhole, you know that you're getting full thickness weld and you're depositing material all the way to the bottom of the, the weld. Anytime that this keyhole starts to disappear and you're left with just the gap, that's giving you an idea that you are not getting to the bottom. And so if that happens, you need to stop, get some more heat in there, use the heat of the torch to melt it through. And then once you see that keyhole again, you're back to depositing material in the puddle and slowly moving forward. So. The trick is to maintain that keyhole from the beginning to the end. So once again, if you haven't watched the safe setup and operation of oxycetylene gas welding, I would highly recommend you watch that before you attempt this, and I'll put the link above for that. And once again, I'm using the same sample material, so one inch wide, one eighth thick, hot rolled flat bar. And I have cleaned off all of that mill scale on the edge and on the two sides on both pieces. So we're ready to set this up. So in order to set this up with the gap you need, you could just measure it with a ruler, but it's gonna move on you and it's gonna be really quite frustrating. So another way is get yourself a magnet, kind of just keep the pieces flat as you're tack welding it, and then get yourself one of these welding rods with whatever diameter you need, and that way you can put it in there and it will space it out perfectly for you.
so first thing I gotta do is I gotta get some heat back in here, get that puddle liquid, and then I gotta make a keyhole. So I'm gonna make that keyhole by just keeping that torch in one spot, getting it to kind of burn a hole that's a little bit bigger than the gap. And watch that I'm actually getting liquid metal all the way to the other side of the material. Sometimes you can get the torch kind of really close to get that keyhole to pop. Alright, there's my keyhole. Now I just got to try to maintain this. Yeah, and I still got to do all my previous gas welding video stuff. I got a nice smooth movements. Make sure I don't get the tip of the welding tip too hot. Make sure I'm moving over evenly. Watching behind me for any kind of holes. I'm kind of feeling like I picked too big of a welding filler rod too. Got a 1 8 inch filler rod. I probably could have gone one size down. Noticing it's kind of sticking to the material really easy. Just keep an eye on that liquid material. Is it going through the other side? And it tends to kind of make a sound when you've gone through too. You can kind of hear the sound echoing off the table. Make sure you put enough material so you don't have too flat or a concave kind of weld bead on the top. And if everything goes well, we should have a nice smooth even bead all the way on the other side too. Anytime that you think that you don't have that keyhole, just stop, get some extra heat in there, kind of use the flame of the torch to kind of punch a hole through. Make sure that you're going right along the gap, which is a little bit easier to see than just a closed butt wheel joint. I've got my welding tip facing a little bit kind of angled forward, so I'm kind of preheating. Probably should do actually a little bit more. Okay, 
you know, as I get to the end of the material, I might find that I might have to regulate the heat a bit. You just kind of have to see as you go. Okay, now I did have it kind of cover there, so I'm not sure if I actually got through on that one spot before I got to the tack well. So all I can do is kind of slow down, make sure there's enough heat that it actually kind of tries to get through. But I do know that that tack did go through, so I just got to finish it here. And we'll take a look and see how this went. While these samples cooled down, I've also cleaned it up on the wire wheel so we can take a look at it. And uh, you know what, for me not having done one of these in about a year or so, I think that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. Let's take a look at it. So looking at the top of this sample, this is where I started and that's where I ended. There's not a single hole in here. There's no undercutting and it's slightly above the surface. So we've got full thickness. The C pattern is very even and nice and steady along. So that's pretty good. And then if we flip it over, well, what do you know? There's not a single spot here where it's not full thickness. And in fact, there's some spots here where I've actually got kind of a full thickness bead kind of starting to get formed on the underside and all the way from the beginning and all the way to the end. So that is a very strong gas welding butt weld joint. So I did a second weld sample here just so that I could film from some different angles and splice in that footage and that way you guys could get a better shot of that keyhole I was talking about. And when I did that, I did go down to a 332nd filler rod and I want to show you the results. So check this out. This is the underside of that weld sample. And you can really see that there is a second weld bead that's hanging underneath the weld sample. So really quite cool. And this is gonna be a very strong part. All right, there's a wrap on another video from Way the Wrench and on how to become a welder. This time on a whole bunch of great stuff about gas welding, butt welding joints. If you have any questions or concerns or you wanna know a little bit more, just put a comment down below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. And if you haven't already, why don't you follow us on Instagram, Way of the Wrench, that we get all the behind the scenes, pictures and videos and things that are going on in the shop. And until next time, take it easy.